Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Frankie FM84. A big thank you for joining me on another episode of Bello Calcio. We're currently out in Japan in the J League. We are managing Shonan Bell Mare. So if you were with us yesterday, you would have seen that we swept aside Gamba Osaka in the Emperor's Cup. We had a 2-0 victory and we marched on to the next round of that cup. In today's episode, we are turning our attentions to yet another cup as we are back in action in AFC Champions League. We have Percy Jakarta. We've uh, absolutely missed nothing. We've just skipped forward four days. So you are all up to date. We're just going to jump straight on into this one. It's quite exciting. I'm looking forward to this game. What can we do? But firstly, let's show you the starting 11 and then how we get on against Percy Jakarta. Okay, then here we go. This is going to be the starting 11 that we are going to put out in the AFC Champions League. We have Tani in goal, Buddi Wansapeng at left back, Tachibana, Kuwahara, and Campana at right back. We then have Ghana, Preysar, Nishikawa, and Hayashi. Luckily, his injury wasn't too bad in the last game. We then have Machida and Mita up front. Hopefully, they're going to score the goals that continue our good run of form in the AFC Champions League. And yet again, we are looking to defend this trophy. We are going to be pressing hard and early, hopefully. Let's see what we can do as we face off against Persia Jakarta. Another big tie then in this season is off and running as we get the Champions League game underway. And straight away, we've had a chance. Straight away, we've scored. Taro Mita is going to get his 28th goal of the season. Absolutely prolific, this kid is. Uh, it all started after just a minute on the clock. Garner at the corner. Who got the first header at the near post? Was it Kuwahara? It is Kuwahara. He hits the crossbar with the header. Defenders just like hovering on the line. Mitters followed it up, smashed the ball into the back of the net. And we have a nice early lead. I have a feeling that this is going to be the pattern for the game. And we are looking to attack again. He's put the one Sepeng gives the ball away. And now he needs to get back in position because they're breaking down his side of the pitch. Steven is going to cross the ball in. Oh, Tani has made a right mess of it. And... Luckily, he makes up for it with a fantastic save as the ball was cut back. It was smashed at him in quite a close range. I mean, not sure what he was doing in the first place, going for a ball, kind of flapping at it and then letting them in. But the second save, the kind of reflex save, was just amazing to keep the ball out, to keep the score at 1-0. Uh, proving there why he's rated so highly, probably in real life. I mean, yeah, I think he's pushing to be Japan's. Or he's certainly pushing to be in Japan's national team in this game at the moment in 2026, I think we are. Uh, he's certainly pushing to be Japan's number one goalkeeper. And he's showing why they're in the game. We're on the attack again. Machida with the ball. Now it was uh, played in behind the defenders. Prey sight is on it. He's had a shot from inside the box. Finishes it off in the bottom corner. We are 2 0 up and cruising after 19 minutes in this Champions League tie. Um, some fantastic play. Campania is the ball, with the ball in behind. Machida just gets on it. When he cuts it back there, Preysar thought he was going to pass because he had a man in the middle. But no, he's just going to smash that left foot in across the goalkeeper. It goes into the far side of the net, in off the inside of the side netting. It's a brilliant finish. And it's a brilliant lead to be 2 0 up. We are pretty comfortable. I mean, we're on the attack again here with Tachibana, but D1 to Peng to Ghana. Quite a few players on bookings already in this first half. Uh, might have to have a look at that at half time to protect some of them. Because if uh, the yellow cards mount up for future games, then do not want anybody getting sent off, certainly. Preysart's in again, and Preysart's going to score again. Again, it's left footed. He's in behind. Hard and low, past the goalkeeper. Doubles his tally in the game. Second goal in the space of five minutes, according to the commentary. And after 23 minutes, we're 3 0 up. As I said, I was looking forward to this game because they are opposition that I am used to from last season's uh, Englishman abroad. And yeah, we are steamrolling through the game in the first half. I'd say it's pretty much comfortable now. I think we are. Well, we can dip our name into the hat for the next round. It's just going to be a question of how many, I think, as Nishikawa was pushing the ball forwards again. Price starts in for a hat trick. Tries to lay it off, gets a lucky deflection back into his path, and he does smash it into the uh, roof of the net. It says a five minute double. Is that, I think that is like, is it 11 or 12 minute hat trick? 
And Nishikawa plays the ball. Preissart takes the touch. The defender tries to cut it out. Harris, it just rolls it into the path of Preissart. Once again, smashes it past the goalkeeper. And the times come up here. Straight back into another action clip. As Percy Jakarta kicking off. Going all the way back to that goalkeeper, which is probably a mistake. He's lumped it forwards now, straight to one of our players. Kuwahara brings it down, plays the book, the one to Peng. Nishikawa to Campania to Mita. Achida, the ball was on there if he would have carried the run on. Mita's in behind, he's at the inside of the post. And yeah, I think the flag was going to go up anyway, but I was just waiting to see if he went and followed it up and put it in the net. Which he didn't, because obviously he was offside. And then we've just had a free kick that's come in, and that's gone over the top as well. If we get a chance here, Preissart scored a hat trick in nine minutes 20, 25, 29. Which is pretty impressive, isn't it? Considering also he's playing as a left winger, he's not even playing as a striker. That is some good going. And we're on the attack again. Machida with the ball to Mita. He hit the inside of the post last time. Chipped the goalkeeper from the edge of the box. And that is 5-0 in the first half. I did say it could be a case of how many. I am surprised at how much of a mismatch some of these teams are in the AFC Champions League. Like when I was playing as Burham United and as... Um, Sullivan United last year in last year's iteration of the game, FM21. The AFC Champions League was a tough, tough competition to play in. You're coming up against some really good teams. And I mean, the way I've tried to load this game up as well, I've tried to load up enough nations, certainly of the nations that are exempt from being foreign in terms of the J League. So the Singapore's, the Malaysia's, those kinds of leagues, just to make it a little bit more respectable, so there's a, a bigger database, but it just turns out that some of these countries just aren't strong enough, and I mean, I suppose we'll end up facing somebody like Alali, or I, I forget who we played in the final last season, but we scored again, John Nishikawa makes it six, um, Alalali, I think it was, Alali, I, I can't remember, but like the teams are a little bit samey-samey in terms of Names Al Ali Al Ali. I can't think, but when you get to the final and you're playing against those kinds of teams, there is a bit of a step up in quality. But I think, in terms of what we're facing here, obviously just brushing them aside. And like I said, if some of my players are not rated as wonder kids, then they really need to be because some of the Japanese talent we've got, and certainly some of the Thai talent that we've got. I think when you look at the Thai players that are out there at the moment, you look at Subchak and Supernat and Theatrical and Kanit Panya, we've certainly got some of the players in terms of regens that are going to be better than those players. And we're obviously showing it. I mean, it's got under the corner here. It's coming in. It's headed away. And they're actually going to get to this first year, Persija. They'll get on the ball, play it backwards. I thought it was just going to go out and be meaningless, but... Now they kept it in and we've stolen it away. Garner's played the ball forwards to Nishikawa, to Machida. Preissart's in behind. Preissart for a change doesn't score. And that should take us to half time with three minutes added on. And yes, we are in at half time. So let's get through and then we're going to make some changes pretty soon. They've made three changes in one go at half time themselves. Percy Jakarta. Ah, this is the team we played, weren't it? Shabab Al Ali Dubai. So that's it. Shabab Al Ali was the other team that we played. And again, they are winning against Al Duhail. Duhail. And then you've got Al Ilal, who are Saudi Arabian. And then you've got Kadzia. Kadzia, I think that says. So, yeah. When we get to the later stages, I mean, we're certainly going to probably play one of those couple of teams there when we get forwards into the quarterfinals and then the semi-finals. So I presume it will step up. How have we got players like this on the bench again? How? I am really confused about registration. Well, it's obviously a goalkeeper. Um, going to give Barada a game. We get Ghana. Yeah, no, those are the substitutions we're going to make because those are the only substitutions that we really have in terms of players who are available 
to play that aren't the grayed out players. Uh, I didn't pick up on that. They must have been loaded in from the previous game. Because I only made changes to my first team. I don't remember making any changes to my substitutions. Or substitutes. So obviously they have been in there for a little while. I just haven't picked up on it. And yeah, we've kind of just left them in. What's happened to our lovely green kits? All of a sudden we have one player in our lovely green and blue kit. <coughs> and the men in black have taken over. <coughs> Looks like the linesman crossed it in. It actually wasn't. Uh, Barada took the corner. Kubahara, I think that is, is headed it in. And it's 7-0. A little bit confusing here as to what is happening. Maybe need to be updating some graphics drivers. But uh, at least there's no colour clash. At least we haven't turned into a red team. And then we don't know what the hell's going on at all. Which is a little bit confusing to see all of my players in black. So... Yeah, I can't really pick out who's who here, but you certainly can tell the colour difference. Person to Jakarta there, we're unlucky not to get on the score sheet. 57 minutes on the clock, I think that's the closest that they've certainly come. And we are getting one or two players back in the green and blue. But Kuwahara's not, Campania is. Ishikawa, back to Campania. And we're playing the ball around in the middle. Kind of taking our foot off the gas a little bit, it seems. Ball forwards. Mitt is another player who's in green and blue. We'll place the axe on three. He's not. He's in black. And they're knocking the ball around nicely here in a nice team build up. There's Book D. Wongsapang, who has, in fairness, been quite disappointed in this game. He has not delivered when he's been given his chance. He was complaining a little bit that he wanted some first team football. We played him. And up until that pass, he hadn't been very accurate. But he did put Machida in there, so I can kind of see. That there is still something there. He's going to take the corner. So it's Barada with the corner. So he plays to the near post. It's come off of the crossbar. Taro Mitu is there at the back stick. 30th goal of the season. That's a hat-trick for him as well. And I've got a feeling that not only is Ghana going to break the assist records for a single season. But Mita is going to break his teammate Machida's goal-scoring record. I think Machida got 31 in terms of top performance in the season. We've still got a long way to go to finish the season. And I'm pretty sure that Taro Mitu is going to be in amongst the goals again somewhere down the line. Uh, we're on the attack again here. Machida to Preysart. Inside to Chabana. Kuwahara. What can we do from here? Barada. Mita. Like, are we going to be ruthless and just keep scoring goals? Imagine if we were to get like 9 10 nil in a Champions League. Game, especially not even in the group stages when you're playing against some dodgy teams. I mean, we've done it. Preysar is 9 0. Got himself. Is that the fourth goal of the game? We even lost count now how many goals players are scoring. I think preysar has got four. I think Mitter's got three. Kuahara might have had one. Nishikawa might have got one. I'm not too sure. We'll stop guessing once it goes back to the home screen or the main tablet screen. So Mita has got three. Preysart has got four. Nishikawa has got one. And Kuwahara has got one. So the memory is there. It does still work. Uh, rather glad that that is the case. But we're on to the 85th minute of the game. This one, I think, is uh, just going to run out of time. I'd love us to go and get another goal just to make it double digits. But we're not even going to be that harsh. We've played them off of the park, obliterated them. 32 shots, 14 on target, scored nine of them. We only had next year 3.65, but we got nine goals. So that's pretty ridiculous. I mean, our XG is so big in relation to Persigers that they don't even get a red flicker on the bar here. They did have four shots on target, which I'm surprised about because I can only remember them hitting the post obviously doesn't count as a shot on target but that was the closest that they come so that was the only thing that i can remember them doing but we've blown past them we are booking our place in the next round of the champions league so i am going to try if i can and jump forwards because i know let's just blast through these we don't really need to see any of these you can see we're heading for the 18th which is a Friday. Hopefully this is the bit here that we are looking for. So Champions League, second round we have just played in. 
going to draw here. I did say, so here's a little bit of trivia. Uh, we break consecutive win records. The 11 games won in a row between the 25th and 25th of September. Oh, in the Champions League. Sorry, I completely misread that there. 11 games won in a row in the Champions League between Wednesday 17th of September and Wednesday 16th of September 2026 in a new Champions League record. Uh, we also set a record for goals, 40, breaking our own record. We record biggest ever win in the Champions League. And then we didn't do the draw, which is what I was expecting. Oh, it's because we're not on May 18th. If only I had a brain sometimes. So let's see. Are we going to get to that point where we get the draw? We say that we are. I want to find out who we are playing. Is the draw still not done or is it just not told us it's done? No, it still says unknown for the quarterfinals. So hopefully we're going to get to a point in the day. Here we go. Champions League draws today. So the next round to be drawn is the quarterfinal. Then it will be the semi-final. So let's draw the next team. Tractor SC. Wow. They're from Iran. Impressive they've got this far in the tournament. Who will they play? Shabab Al Ali. And Kashiwa Raisal. This is going to be us, isn't it? No, Gambra Saka. So an all Japanese affair, which luckily doesn't involve us. Shonan Balamare will play. Ura Red Diamonds. So a little bit suspect. Uh, this league is just becoming really strong when we've got four of the eight teams that are left in the competition. Al Wada, and they must play Al Hilal. So, do we then go to the semi finals? Okay, so Tractor or Shabab Al Ali will play Al Wada or Al Hilal, which means us or Ura Red Diamonds. We'll face off in an all Japanese semi final as well against either Kashiwa Raisol or Gamba Asaka. So that is pretty interesting, isn't it? So guaranteed to have at least one Japanese team in the final, and we are guaranteed to play against a team of a different nationality in the final at least. So something to look forward to there. So, in terms of where we are going to be coming back, oh my gosh, how has this happened here? So it's not put those in as dates. Let me jump forwards and see. Will they will it add to the schedule? Yes, here we go. So it's added it to the schedule now. So the Ah, okay. So there it had two Emperor's Cup quarterfinals, but it's actually the IFC Champions League quarterfinal in the first game and that is going to be the next episode we then have ura red diamonds back to back this game really likes throwing out the back to backs i mean we had this for kobe what three times in a row last season and then we've played them a couple of times here and now we're playing ura red diamonds back to back but yes that is what we're going to go for we're going to go for the afc champions league quarterfinal tomorrow we're going to see if we can progress to face off against another japanese team in that competition and then the day after that, we will have the Emperor's Cup quarterfinal again against Ura Red Diamonds. So a lot of Ura Red Diamonds content coming your way. But for this one, I'm going to start to wrap it there. If you're at this point of the video and you've enjoyed today's episode, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button to help the channel. It's grown so much over the first year of YouTube. We are now at 1,400 subscribers. We are on the road to 1,500. So if you can help out with that, please don't forget to hit those buttons. Get it out to so many other people means that we can help the channel to grow. But for this one, I'm going to end it there. Come back tomorrow and check out how we get on in an AFC Champions League quarterfinal against Uruwa Red Diamonds.